Pastor Ora. Ah, Living Word Christian Center. Good evening to you, sir. Much love. Much love. All right. Much love. Let me ask you a question, man. Are you excited for Sister Blessing tonight? Really, really excited. I'm very, very proud of her. I've known her for a long time, and you know, I'm really, really proud to see what God is doing through her yeah. and the work that she's doing. Yeah, awesome. I've been asking everybody the same question all evening. Uh, it, I, I might sound like a broken record, or it might seem a little bit monotonous. Well, I haven't heard it yet, so I guess. All right, well, let me ask you the question. What do you think about this song she did, Mad Christian? Well, when, when she first shared the topic with me, yeah. I, saw I was taken aback a little bit, but she began to explain about it, you know, explain what she meant and the purpose of it and what she's trying to portray as an artist. And I understood it. Yeah. You know, matter of fact, I'm going to be talking tonight about anger management. All know? right. Yeah, because you're one of the speakers. Yeah, and, 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 and I think that the topic that the speakers are, are speaking on is be angry, but sin not. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So my topic is, you know, control your anger before it controls you. All right. Well, we can't wait to hear you, sir. Much love. Pastor Oral. Hey, welcome, man. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you. All right. Good. Praise God. I said I'm here to celebrate uh, with Sister Blessing as God has used her to release this album tonight. Why don't y'all put your hands together for her? Come on, come on, we can do better. Come on, stand up, give her a standing ovation. Sister Blessing, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. Amen. She asked me to come and just talk a little bit about um, the angry and sin not. I'm not going to take a lot of time. Um, um, she gave me about 10 minutes. I'm just going to take about nine and a half minutes to get this done. I, I think I overprepared. I have enough for an hour, but we don't have all that time. Right? So, good to have you all in the house um, tonight. Turn with me real quick. If you have your Bibles, I don't know most of you don't have your Bibles tonight, but turn with me real quick. Um, let me talk just real quick. Quickly. How many know the word of God is good news? Come on, everybody here knows good news. Jesus says the spirit of the Lord is up on me because he is anointing me to bring good news to the poor. Can anybody can anybody tell me what's good news to the poor? The good news to the poor is that you don't have to be poor anymore. Y'all in agreement with that? What is good news to the blind? You don't have to be blind anymore. What is good news to the lame? That you don't have to be lame anymore. Good news to the bound is that you don't have to be bound anymore. And so scripture always brings good news. The gospel is always good news. I'm, I'm cool with this. The gospel is always good news. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about anger tonight. And, and be angry and sin not. Amen. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 4, and verse 3. Because that is the first instance where we see the emotion of anger. The emotion of anger. Look at it. Genesis 4, 3. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. God asked him, why are you so angry? Why do you look so dejected? Verse 7 says, you will be accepted if you do what is right. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor, you will be accepted. If you do what is right, watch this now. Look what the word said. But if you refuse, somebody say refuse, to do what is right, then watch out. I want you to look at that. That's very significant. If you refuse to do what is right, watch out. All right? Because sin is crouching at the door. Are you all even hearing me tonight? If you refuse to do right, watch out because sin is standing or crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, master your anger or it will master you. Control your anger or it will control you. All right, touch somebody and say, control your anger, 
or it will control you. How many know that anger is an emotion? It's an emotion that all of us have. God himself gets angry. But anger is an emotion that is characterized simply by feelings of displeasure, indignation, hostility, wrath, and vengeance. Many times, reacting in anger is how we express our dissatisfaction with life. It's defined in the Greek language as the strongest of all passions. It's a stronger passion than love itself, anger. Anger begins with a feeling that's often expressed in words or action. We feel something and it causes a reaction. Amen. And so anger then is a feeling. So somebody says it's a feeling. It's an emotion. But it's an emotion that sometimes, in a lot of cases, bring about wrong action. Right? Now we, we see the first example of that emotion being expressed. We see it expressed by a person by the name of Cain. And Cain was angry, not because his brother did anything, but he was angry because of what he did and it was not accepted by God. Let me tell you something, you don't have to do anything to people for them to be angry at you. All you need to do is to be alive. Just be alive, just, just present yourself in a certain way that they, they look at you and say, you know, who does he or she think she is? Folks get angry for no reason. You don't have to give people a reason to get angry. They, if it's already inside of them, if they're already disposed to it, that's exactly how they're going to carry out. It's an emotion. Tell somebody it's an emotion. It's important that we understand that we must control. Somebody shout control. Control all. Somebody say all. All our emotions. It's not just anger alone we've got to control. We have to control what we are thinking. We've got to control what we're feeling. Don't you know we've got to control how we love? We must be in control. Touch your neighbor's neighbor. You've got to be in control of all your emotions. All right. So handling anger is an important life skill. Christian counselors report that 50% of people who come in for counseling have problems dealing with anger. Anger can shatter communications, tear apart families and relationships. It, it ruins joy. It, it will destroy your health. People, sadly, people tend to justify their anger instead of accepting responsibility for it. Everyone struggles to some varying disease with, with, um, degrees with anger. But thankfully, God's word contains principles regarding how to handle anger in a godly manner. And how to overcome sinful anger. The Bible said be angry, but what? But sin not Simply means that I can be upset about a certain thing But I'm not going to allow my emotions to control me Or cause me to do something that is out of the will of God Can somebody just say amen right there Just say amen let me know y'all ain't sleeping on me right now I got about four more minutes to go Alright So be angry and sin not So simply it means that That God allows us to be angry Based upon the situation But even if we are angry God says we are responsible For how we react to it Simply means God says situation is going to happen in your life But it doesn't give you the right To act in your way as a child of God, you must be in control of how you react to external stimuluses. How many know most of the things that get to us are things on the outside of us? What we have to do is understand that things on the outside of us, if we keep it on the outside of us, then we can deal with it better. The problem is we allow external things to get internal, and when it gets internal, we lose control. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't let it get inside of you. I, I, gave, I, I gave an example a few months ago, and I shared it with my church. I said, you can fall in the ocean. You could be there in the ocean for days and never drown. What, what do you mean, Pastor? What I'm saying is, you could be in the ocean, so a body of water, but as long as you don't allow the water to get inside of you, you will never drown. 
Are y'all even getting this? So no matter what your situation is, no matter what the problem is, no matter what the circumstance you're going through, don't let it get inside of you. Tell somebody to keep it outside of you. You can't drown unless water gets inside of you. Are y'all even getting that tonight? Come on, tell somebody to don't let the water get inside of you. Because you only drown when you allow it to get in. You all, I hear black folks always talking about I'm going to lose my mind. Why do black people always want to lose their mind? They simply lose their mind because all the stuff they're allowed to get into their mind. You've got to learn to keep things, watch this, and keep people external. The only thing that's supposed to be inside of you is the Spirit of God. Y'all not even hearing me tonight. The Spirit of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the beauty of God, and the glory of God. But the Bible says, out of the, ma- the, the mouth speaketh, out of the abundance of what? The heart. So if you got anger and all kinds of evil communications coming out of your heart, that seems to tell me that's what's in there. And we need to replace it with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So God accepted Abel and his offering, but he rejected Cain and his offering. As a, as a result of this, Cain became angry. He was angry at God and mad at his brother. And the Bible said Cain rose up against his brother and murdered him. Isn't that sad? So the first siblings on the face of the earth, anger caused the brother to kill the other. So, so watch this now. So this thing about unchecked anger, it didn't start just now. It starts way back in the beginning, 6,000 years ago. One man didn't know how to check his anger, and because he didn't know how to check his anger, he committed the first murder on the face of the earth. He took the first blood on the face of the earth. Listen, you better check your anger because your anger will have you doing things that nobody would have expected you to ever do. Am I right? Is anybody here done something out of anger and wish they had to stop for a minute and count to 10? Sometimes you may have to count to 100. <laughs> Because you must refuse, watch this now, refuse to take action when you're angry. Y'all, y'all not even hearing me tonight. I think we got a whole bunch of distractions here tonight. But, but you must refuse to take action when you're angry. Let your emotions chill. Tell somebody to just chill. Let your emotions chill before you take action. Because when you move out of anger, you tend to want to say the wrong things. And when you begin to say the wrong things, you end up sometimes, most of the times, doing the wrong thing. Anger done messed up a lot of homes. There's a lot of people in prison right now simply because of unchecked anger. Mm -hmm. Marriage is busted up because of unchecked anger. Families destroyed because of unchecked checked anger so we've got to get this word in our spirit that we can be angry but sin not we could be angry but keep it holy are you hearing me I was very angry when I heard about them uh, killing those Christians over in Afghanistan wherever it was they were chopping off their heads all Christians around the world should be very angry about that But I'm not going to burn down a building because of that. Are you hearing me? I'm going to act holy by going to God and complain to God about what I'm feeling. Hallelujah. So that's what we call righteous anger. It's anger because of what's happening that should not be happening. But my response to it tells the world about my maturity. It speaks to the world about my control. It speaks to the world about my understanding. Amen. And so if I'm going to be who I am in God, then I have to keep in check all my emotions, including my anger. Amen. How many of y'all got kids? Don't that make you angry sometimes? 
Lord Jesus. You love them, but God knows they can make you angry sometimes. Well, you're not going to get something to bash them upside the head. Am I right? You're not going to do that. Only a crazy mother or father do things like that. But you've got to act out and keep your anger in check. Otherwise, you kill them. Now, now you, you may threaten them. I brought you in here and I could take you out. Anybody heard that from their parents? Right? But, but we're just saying that just to scare them. But the truth is, we are angry, but we have checked our anger. Why? Because we allow love to control how we react. How many know love is the greatest need? Hallelujah. Watch this. You make me very upset, but because I love you, I'm not going to retaliate. Hello, anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and, and watch this now. Is my 10 minutes up? Thank you, baby. Uh, my 10 minutes up. I, I, I got to go. Uh, they, they taking, they keeping my clock. All right, let me just finish up with this in 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, Prophet Zach, take five of his. How much you have? <laughs> he got six. <laughs> All right, so, so watch this now. So love now governs my response. Are you hearing me? Touch your neighbor's neighbor. Let love govern your response. The greatest, everything else will cease, but love never should cease. Are you hearing me? Prophecy one day going to cease. Anybody know that? But love never going to cease. The word of God is always going to be here. Guess what? Love always going to be here too. And so love is the greatest of all. Somebody said love is the greatest of all. So, so I've got to exercise, somebody say exercise, love when I feel anger come upon me. We, we've, got to, we, we've got to find love. Tell somebody, you've got to find love. Watch this now. Watch this now. And, and I'm going to end with this. If we are a child of God, if we're children of God, right? If we're children of God, then we have the attributes of God. Am I right? So if we have the attributes of God, the Bible says that God is love. Y'all not even hearing me tonight. So if God is love, and I'm a child of God, and the Bible says in Him I live, I move, and I have my being, simply means I receive from him what I receive from him. I become that thing. Y'all got to hear this. I receive from him. I express that thing. So if God is love and we're in God and he's in us, then love is already in us. We just have to allow it to be expressed. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Y'all know that, right? We just have too little of love. Love, and I'm going to end on this, love covers a multitude of sin. God bless you. Come on, give me when you keep all you got and spread yourself thin When man has stopped your back, God will give you a blessing To God be the glory, sun rise and sunset I see him church politics cause Jesus said All I'm a do, all I'm a try, but now